Hello, it's Brian from Optimized Marketing, and today we're going to talk about how to reach 10 to 20 times more prospects using the buyer interest pyramid properly. Now, you're probably a little skeptical, thinking, yeah, come on, how are you going to get me that many more prospects? So just stick with me for a minute, I'll give you a quick example. So I was recently talking to a business owner who sells high-end LED tactical flashlights. So these are very impressive, and it took me a while, sort of, you know, I was talking through, looking at their business, looking at the marketing materials, and I just went off and did my own sort of research, because I didn't really understand, okay, what, what what flashlight should I have, right? Like, what's what's best for me as a general, like, emergency use or, or whatever, and they didn't have a way to really address that, and what I found out was that my flashlights, that's really kept in my pickup truck, one of these giant D-cell, super heavy flashlights, um, was about one-tenth the brightness of one of their lights. And of course, when I went to get the flashlight, my batteries were dead. And their flashlights were chargeable. So though it's more expensive, it is a fraction of the size. It's about one quarter the size. So it even fits in your pocket nice and easily. No, it was not fit in your pocket. Uh, it's 10 times to up to 30 times brighter depending on the model. And it's gonna save you money in the long term because it's rechargeable. I'm like, this is impressive when you look at your marketing. And we'd see things like this in his marketing. This is their Black Friday special. 3500U for only $9.95 when you purchase the PD35V2, TK16, or TK11 TAC. Huh? Do you have any idea what that means? I don't. <laughs> uh, what was happening is he's targeting a buy now market. People that know their flashlights, know what they're looking for, and potentially say, oh man, that 3500U for only $9.95, that's normally $28.95, right? Which obviously should be there. Oh, cool. Anybody else like me that's like, I think a flashlight's awesome when I actually understood the specs and how it worked compared to what I currently have, they're missing out on, on, on reaching. And so if you understand your marketing's targeting and buy now, which most marketing out there is, it's offering discounts and coupons and things like that, like that ad was, it can get to people who are just information gathering or even further down the problem aware. I'm going to suggest it's not worth your time at this point to look at not problem aware. We'll, we'll talk about that more. So that's the current marketing of buy now. So look at a different example, drinking water. People that are buying drinking water systems are sitting at Google and searching for drinking water system, buy drinking water system, uh, drinking water system company, those types of things. Uh, and so you use Google search or organic search to get in front of those people to make sales pretty quick, you know, right away. However, that's a very small percentage of the market at any given time. People that are still doing research are seeing if it's searching for drinking water filters, best drinking water filters, drinking water filter ratings, reviews of drinking water filters, those types of things, right? Okay, and then you have the problem where I like this example because even though the funnel is generally you know, one to five percent are in buy now, and these things vary with most people not being problem aware. I actually think drinking water is the opposite. I think most people are problem aware. How do we know this? Most people drink bottled water, right? Most people have a pitcher filter or a fridge filter or something like that that they're using to filter the water. They're not drinking. Nobody's like, man, I love my tap water. I mean, there's a few, not many. Most people not loving their tap water. And so that's an opportunity because we also know that most people are not using drinking water systems. They're using some other sort of minimal opportunity. So just thinking from that example right there, if you can get to all the people that are drinking just bottled waters in a small pack or pitcher filters and come with a message that, that reach them, what does that look like? Your market's going to be at least 10x larger than what you're kind of currently able to get after just talking about drinking water systems directly. Okay, so let's let's look through this a little bit and talk about the different stages of this funnel. First thing, when we understand this funnel is you start to realize, okay, I don't need to waste money on being top of mind, right? That's sort of a legacy uh, Mad Men style marketing from the 50s, like, oh, I just got to get your message out there to be top of mind. It doesn't work now. Why doesn't it work now? 2,000 messages a day you're bombarded with. 2,000 marketing messages. You know what happens when you see 2,000 marketing messages a day? Because right now you're like, is it really 2,000? Is you block them out. <laughs> your brain learns to just ignore the vast majority of them. Something really has to capture your attention to, to even break through for you to consider it. So putting a budget and a plan that's around just being top of mind is not the most effective way. Also, when we start understanding the pyramid, we realize that, okay, we don't want to fall into this sort of duopoly trap. Hey, am I doing branding? Am I doing lead gen? Lead gen, nothing wrong with that, of course. That's the buy now people, right? Great. Let's go after those you want. Those are just going to make you profitable today, this week, and so on. Awesome. Branding, what is that? 
it's not necessarily clear. Like you have to understand is my branding going to be problem where information gathered, or it can even be to the buy now group, right? And it does have an effect. Certainly, this can help you grow your business. You just have to realize where to use it. Okay, let's keep moving here. Don't address multiple buyers at once. So if I'm trying to market a uh, drinking water system, and I'm talking to people who don't realize they are drinking pee water, like that's literally what it is, right? It goes down the toilet, gets recycled, gets filtered, but the Prozac doesn't get filtered out of that, and I, I put together a marketing that talks about that, you're not going to say, oh, $100 keep one off a drinking water system. No, no, no. You just took somebody that had no idea that there's Prozac in the drinking water, uh, and you're saying, buy, buy a drinking water system. No. You say something like, hey, learn the 10 things the EPA is not testing for, is not required to be tested for in your water, in this local market, right? In the Pittsburgh area or whatever it is. Oh, okay, now you're taking not problem where up to the problem where stage, right? You got their email address to be able to send them that information. Got it. So make sure your marketing is targeted at the right place. And don't use the skip CTA. It's kind of tied to that one. Um, I don't want to show a problem where customer a buy now ad. Why? Because they're not ready to buy now. Okay? We're going to lose them. So how do we move them up this pyramid? First, let's talk about if your marketing is always geared towards that 3%, everyone that's buying from you somehow got educated from someone else. And how do you know if you can keep optimizing that? If you currently have customers, I'm sorry, competitors, then there's more opportunity, right? Because if they're buying from another competitor, there's people that are buying now, not from you. Hey, there's an opportunity there. That being said, you can't only do that, right? Once you just get an ROI from buy now, doesn't mean you have the entire market, but you have an ROI from it. Now you can start moving the people in information gathering mode. In other words, you start at the top of the funnel, make sure all that marketing is dialed in, and then you go to the next level of the funnel. And again, this is medium agnostic. I'm not saying this is, hey, got to be social media. Or this has got to be, uh, it can be, and this can be very effective, and we'll talk about why. But this could be radio or television or direct mail. All of this can work. Okay, second, understand the interest that you're targeting. So, you know, that's the opposite of what we were saying before. Like, if I'm going after problem aware, know that this piece is going after problem aware people. If it's ready for buy now, know that. And of course, what's your call to action? The call to action should be relevant. Buy nows are discounts, coupons, you know, the special is going to expire, that sort of thing. Um, information gathering mode that's going more towards, hey, why do business with me? Right? Oh, we have the best warranties. Oh, we have the best service. Oh, we have a long term history. Those types of things. Um, problem where is different. I, I got to make sure people know they have a problem. That you're not going to go directly from there up to the buy now. How do we move people along this funnel? Well, you use email nurturing, you use retargeting, so that means once they visit your site, you follow them around. We call it stalker marketing. It's probably more accurate. And ad sequencing. So adding with sequencing very quickly is just you show people ad A. Once they've seen ad A, video A, they will can then see video B. If they haven't seen ad A, they'll never see video B. You can imagine how you can use that to educate people to bring them along this path. Uh, and now that you can control that. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Why would you do it the old way? <laughs> so we'll talk about all of these in a separate video. Hopefully this was very helpful for you. And let me know what questions you have in your feedback. Thank you.